Welcome to Quick Law with the Legal Lioness. Now, if you hear kids screaming in the background, I'm parked next to a school and the kids are on the playground and they're running around and having fun and screaming with joy. So there's nothing bad happening. <laughs> okay. Um, so I just wanted to hop on quickly and talk about the news in the Karen Reed case. So Karen Reed was accused of killing her boyfriend. Um, they, that she was, yeah, she was accused of killing him. That case went to trial and ended in a mistrial. She was accused of manslaughter and leaving the scene of an accident. And the prosecution said that she had reversed into her boyfriend, John O'Keefe, in the snow and left him there, left him for dead, basically. He suffered uh, mortal injuries. She drove off and he died. The defendant, or, yeah, Karen Reed's story or side of the, the case is that uh, she had nothing to do with it. She dropped him off at his friend's house and then she went home to look after his niece and nephew um, that weren't her family, but they were his family. But she went home to look after them and um, he stayed at a friend's place to have a party. And when she saw him, he was alive and well. And her version and the defense's version was that something happened when he went into that party. The people in that house did something. Now, that caused his death. Now, the, the weird thing is that the investigator, the lead investigator on the case, who jumped at the chance to get Karen Reed um, charged, he was very good friends with the people in that house. And this came out at trial. It also came out at trial that he was sending texts to people saying that he was searching Karen Reed's um, phone for nudes and um, just making salacious and other really alarming comments so the case went to the jury the jury couldn't decide um guilty or, or not guilty so the judge called, caused um declared a mistrial but then of course to add spice to the already spicy situation um the jurors came back several of the jurors contacted the the defense and said actually we did reach a decision on two of the three charges uh, and we found not guilty on two of the three charges. It was just the third charge that we were deadlocked on. So she should be found not guilty. Anyway, both sides have filed pleadings with the court and um, the, the defense wants a not guilty verdict on those two and it, uh, it just seems to be dragging on. The judge doesn't seem to be doing anything about it and I really think the judge should call the jurors back, um, even just in, in secret, call them back or do it on Zoom and ask each of them what was their decision on each of the charges so that she can make a proper, fair uh, adjudication moving forward. So all of that's the history. And now the update today is that John O'Keefe's family has filed a civil suit, a wrongful death suit against Karen Reed. Now, this will be worrying for Karen Reed in the sense that a civil case, in order to win a civil case, you just have to show that what you're alleging is more likely than not. So if you were, if it was an exam, you have to get 51% and then you pass. So you just have to show it's slightly more likely than any other uh, version of events. So if they can show that it's more likely that she left him to die than that she dropped him off to go to a party, uh, then they will be successful in a wrongful death suit. Uh, and it's very weird if you go back and you, there's lots of people made videos about this case uh, there were injuries on his arm that the prosecution said came from the broken tail light, but then there was evidence that showed that the tail light actually wasn't broken um, some some hours later when Karen Reed left the home again to go and find John O'Keefe. This was the next morning that the tail light wasn't broken uh, at that stage, um, and there's some suggestion that the tail light only got broken after the car got impounded by police. So the the evidence gathering was really sloppy. They didn't take photos before they impounded the car which would have resolved the issue as to whether or not the tail light was already broken at that stage uh the other thing that is very weird is these these marks on his on his arm i've seen a video of a a, a dog expert uh and he showed what dog bites look like and those marks on that body's arm looks like dog bites and the people in that uh house had a german shepherd dog so i don't know there's there's just the injuries don't look consistent to me like somebody got bumped over in the snow. Um, anyway, so that's the, the latest update. Uh, Karen Reed has to has to go through that. So the the 
lead investigator and some of the other investigators have actually been stood down at no pay or the lead investigators no pay some of the others are still being paid and they're being investigated their conduct is being investigated uh, to see whether they meet the sufficient standard um, of conduct that is required of police officers and because they've been stood down the prosecution in some other cases that are pending has had to write to the defense lawyers and say well these these cops that investigated in your case have now been stood down in another case being the Karen Reed after the Karen Reed case or as a result of how they investigated Karen Reed case um, due to potentially um, misconduct as a police officer so this this whole thing is just a big mess from beginning to end and if they had brought in people who were um, who would genuinely had no interest in the case I think people would have more confidence in the evidence that they gathered but instead they brought in friends of the people who lived in the house and we know that they were friends because the people who lived in the house babysat for the lead investigator on the case so that's how close friends they were that they were babysitting each other's children so Karen Reed saga continues and I will keep you updated as more happens